Hi, I'm Frank Illenberger, the developer and creator of Pianoscope, the professional piano tuning software for iPhone and iPad. I myself am not a piano technician, I'm a software developer, physicist and a pianist. In this video I want to give you some background and a quick introduction to Pianoscope. <laughs> It's a funny story. In uh, 2020, when we had the first COVID lockdown here in Germany, I couldn't get anyone to tune my own piano. So I thought, mm, there must be an app for that. How hard can it be? And uh, I found a free app called Entropy Piano Tuner. And I bought a cheap tuning hammer and some mutes and got to work. But uh, <laughs> the tuning I produced sounded terrible. I gave up midway and I thought I'd try to find a professional tuner after all. The next day I wanted to find out where my error was, but I couldn't find an obvious one. So I guess the software must have been to blame. And uh, I checked the App Store for an alternative and the cheapest one I could find was TuneLab. But I was still shocked at how expensive it was, uh, but I bought it anyway and ended up in an, at least for me, totally incomprehensible user interface. But I read through the docs and watched some YouTube tutorials and got to work again. And three to four hours later, my piano sounded very nice indeed. So I was proud and I loved my new superpower, tuning pianos. But in the following days, I kept thinking, hmm, they need competition. I could do an app like that, maybe even better. So I obvi obviously was infected by the tuning virus. And uh, I started experimenting, understanding the math and dressing it all up in a nice user interface. But it took me 18 months to solve all the algorithmic puzzles. At first, I wanted to publish a tuning app for musicians like myself. But uh, when I finished version one, I presented it to the technicians on the Piano World Forum. And I got such great feedback that I decided to adapt Pianoscope to the needs of professionals as well. Since then, I've been listening to many technicians and I'm constantly trying to improve the software. I think it's my perspective as a non-piano technician. Um, when I started looking into piano tuning, I didn't know, for example, what uh, inharmonicity was, what a uh, tuning interval was, how I could listen for a certain partial. And uh, I first needed to build tools for myself to uh, visualize what was going on inside the piano sound. And the partials display uh, in Pianoscope is a direct result of this. And uh, there I wanted to intuitively see which musical note the partials are assigned to. And uh, let's check it out. I'm gonna play an A3. And um, now I see what partials are in there, but uh, can I hear them individually? Do you hear the second partial? Let's use a pianoscope for this. When I tap the second bar, pianoscope will isolate that partial from the recorded sound for me. And, uh, I'm going to do it again and let's check if we now can identify the partial in the full sound. In the beginning, even this was too hard for me. And uh, for this purpose, I built a sound generator into uh, Pianoscope, which could synthesize partials for me. And uh, here, for example, you will hear a synthetic version of this note with the same inharmonicity as this instrument. And now we again isolate the partial, the second partial, and compare it with the full sound and try to identify it in the full sound.
So this helped help me a lot to, to learn how to listen for this, these things. And um, I later learned from many technicians that there currently is a, a mismatch in how they use their electronic tuning devices. Because nobody deserves to show up at a client's house only to discover that you didn't bring the right tools to the job. But it is not enough to have the right tools. You also need to have the confidence in how to use them. And uh, what about our ears? Aren't they a tool as well? And we all have ETDs, but do you always understand what is going on behind their spinning lights? With a pianoscope, just like with a microscope, you can virtually gaze inside an instrument. And uh, by comparing its visual feedback with your oral experience, you can, with time, gain confidence in your skills and start to understand pianos better. There is a debate about oral tuning versus ETD, and uh, the reason for this is that deep down people know they cannot outsource 100% of their job to a machine without any risk, namely uh, the risk that there are consequences that come from not knowing how to use your ears. It's hard to single out one or two features, but uh, if I had to choose, it'd be two features, uh, a big one and a small one. I think uh, the big one is the ease with which you can measure the inharmonicity of a full instrument in just about two minutes with pianoscope uh, and the benefits you get from that knowledge, like uh, a tuning curve which accounts for all the imperfections in the scaling of a piano. I will show you in a minute how to set up a new tuning like that. Um, and the small one is a function to pick an optimal concert pitch for an instrument which results in the least amount of pin movements. Let me show you. Let's say you want to tune this instrument and you need to pick a concert pitch. One approach can be to uh, simply measure the current pitch of A4. Let's do this. Choose measure. We have 442.1 Hertz. But another approach is to sample more notes and to optimize the concert pitch. Let's do this. Now Pianoscope is suggesting 442.4 Hz as the concert pitch which results in the least amount of pin movement. Pianoscope works with every iPhone or iPad uh, which can run iOS 15 or later. Um, but you don't need the newest fancy schmancy iDevice. Uh, it even runs on a first generation iPhone SE or an iPhone 6S, which you can get on eBay for about $50. Now I want to show you how to set up a new tuning with Pianoscope. In Pianoscope, every instrument is a file. And uh, you can put these files anywhere. They are just regular files. You can put them on iCloud Drive and they're going to be synced between all your devices. And uh, to create such a file, you we click Create Piano. Give it a name, Frank's Upright. And the manufacturer is Yamaha. And the model number is SU118. And um, we have to pick a tuning style. And uh, you can choose to tune for pure octaves or pure twelves. The default is a blend between the two, a compromise between pure octaves and pure twelves. I'm going to go with that. And um, you can choose uh, the equal temperament or one of the about a hundred uh, historic temperaments. But uh, I go with the standard equal temperament. And uh, you have to pick a concert pitch. I already showed you how you can do that. Let's go 442. And we've created our instrument. And now 
um, piano scope is prompting us to measure the inharmonicity of the instrument. For measuring, um, piano scope prompts you to play, uh, play a note and you have to hold it as long until, uh, until the, the note has turned green. This is about a second. Let's do this. So, in the last two octaves I skipped a few notes because the anonymity on a fine instrument is pretty predictable in this range and uh, Pianoscope can extrapolate or interpolate all these uh, needed values there. And you save some time. So what we have here now is the so-called inharmonicity curve. Um, you have a black dot for every note that says how inharmonic the spectrum of the partials of this note is. And um, it gives you an insight into the scaling of this instrument and eventual scaling problems. This is a fine instrument and you see even it has a, a small jump in the inharmonicity in the bass break. And um, the gray curve, the smooth gray curve is the ideal scaling of an ideal piano of that size. So, even before you start tuning, you can spot scaling issues here. So now that we have the knowledge about the inharmonicity, we can start tuning. But before we start tuning, we can take a look at the tuning curve that a pianoscope has calculated for this instrument. We go to the menu and choose tuning curve. And here you see the stretch that a pianoscope has calculated. And uh, the middle line is uh, the, the ideal harmonic line. If there were no inharmonicity, the orange line would be all straight in the middle. And uh, you see in the treble, um, the, the, uh, the tuning curve is stretched up to 30 cents and uh, in the lower bass is uh, also stretched down to minus 30 cents. Um, you also see uh, smaller jumps in the bass break region. This is a consequence of the scaling issue we've uh, detected at these instruments and Pianoscope takes that into account. But you can also take a look at the tu uh, beat rates of the tuning intervals. Let's choose octaves. And here you see that the tuning curve that Pianoscope has calculated will re result in these beat rates for these tuning intervals. And you see that the 8, 4, 6, 3 and 4, 2 intervals are all pretty close to the middle line, which is the zero hertz beat rates, no beating, pretty close to there. But as this is a small instrument, the 10, 5 octaves need to be sacrificed. You will have a, a slight beating of 2 hertz there. Um, so you can uh, see uh, such things even before you start tuning. And uh, if you're good with that, you can start to tune. As Pianoscope ha has measured the full inharmonicity, we are free to tune in any order we like. Um, one exception is a pitch raise, but this is a, a different topic. But we don't have to do a pitch raise here and we are free to tune in any order. The tuning scale of Pianoscope um, has the tuning target in the middle, that's the zero. And uh, to the left you have here a 20 cents flat and to the right 20 cents sharp. You can, by pinching, you can change the scale if you want 100 cents or if you want less, if you, you do that. And you see the scale is not linear. It's very, very coarse on the outside of the scale and very fine in the middle. The precision in the middle is less than tenth of a cent. So um, you can 
don't have to switch while, while when you're pulling up a piano between a coarse mode or a fine mode. It's all in one scale. So, and uh, to tune you have to drive the red indicator to the zero line in the middle and I'm going to show you that. Yes, I'm going to tune A0. This is good. So, but there is a different way of tuning with pianoscope, and this is the so called freeze indicator. This is a second indicator with a gray color, and uh, this indicator is like a snapshot at a certain time after the attack. And this is here for the bass note, is, it's around uh, 500 600 milliseconds. You can change these settings, but that's the default and this gives you a very consistent way of tuning you don't have to repeatedly look for a, for a calm spot because the machine does this for you and um, you have to repeatedly strike the key and then a new line will be measured and uh, the goal is to get this line to zero now watch the gray line let's go up a bit uh, you have to activate it by pressing the snowflake in the toolbox These are the two ways of uh, tuning in pianoscope. There's also a strobe which uh, reflects the same information uh, as the red indicator. I can show you. You can activate the strobe if you want to. Oh, let's go on settings to pitch, strobe, and activate it. And um, then you will get a strobe-like indicator. If it's moving to the right, then the, the pitch is sharp of the target. If it's moving to the left, you're flat. So, but this is the same information as the red indicator and uh, it's just a different representation. You can also use the freeze indicator to tune unisons. Um, with that, you uh, mute the unisons except for one string and tune the strings individually to zero with the freeze indicator. And th with that, you get very good dead-on unisons. It's a very precise and very consistent, uh, repeatable and predictable way of tuning them. If you like the sound of dead-on unisons, it's a great way to do it. Try it out. Mm -hmm.